My name is uh, Pete Costagoyen. I'm the project test pilot for Advanced Hawk. I work for BAE Systems. And behind me here is one of the two simulators we have. This one's at Aero India, and we're using it to demonstrate the capabilities and the new avionics and systems in Advanced Hawk. And the other simulator is back at Wharton in the United Kingdom, where we have uh, a team that are preparing to fly the demonstrator aircraft that we have there. So we're hoping to fly the first, first variant of the Advanced Hawk prototype in about three or four weeks or so back in the UK. So if you come with me, we'll have a look at the simulator, and I'll show you the, some of the uh, unique features of Advanced Hawk. So as well as all the improvements in systems and avionics, the pilot interface with the system has actually changed. It's a, it's a generation or a generation and a half ahead of most of the Hawks out there in the world today. We have a large area display which allows us to be almost infinitely flexible and uh, reconfigure the displays to the desire of the pilot, the student in the front seat and the instructor in the rear seat. The instructor has a completely independent setup in, uh, in the rear seat and he's a, he can manipulate as required. So one of the advantages of the large area display, if the pilot needs to see the map, needs to see greater detail, uh, to break out detail on the map, he can enlarge it, he can pinch and zoom, a la iPad, and if he, if he needs to slew it around, One of the other advantages is if we want to use a laser designator pod, so perhaps we're, uh, we're, using a, we're on a reconnaissance mission or we are actually uh, marking a target with a laser designator pod, we can again break out detail by using maximum size of the screen. But all the portals are flexible and reconfigurable, precisely how the student or the instructor pilot wants to set them out. So probably a good idea now, we're on a, a mission flight, so if you, uh, I can give you a briefing on uh, precisely what the, what the flight involves. So this is uh, an operational conversion unit uh, training mission, and it's uh, an operational mission against uh, an armoured target set in the Himalayas. We're going to get airborne from Leh, and uh, we're already at 27,000 feet, we're at 310 knots. You can see the altitude here, just about 27,000 feet, 310 knots. This is the aircraft symbol, this tells us whether we're level or not. We have these hoops in the sky which show us, which are just part of the simulator to allow us to navigate correctly around the route. We can see that we're 14 and a half miles or so from the target and what we're going to do is we're going to start the simulator and we'll fly this mission to engage one of those tanks in that target set and then we're going to see a surface to air missile threat which is uh, just an emulation using the sensor system. Virtual training mode of the, of the, uh, the aircraft to allow us to receive all the warnings and all the indications as if we had a real surface to air missile threat. We're going to react to that and then we're going to fly some terrain masking at low level around the Himalayas. So before I start the simulator, I'm going to set up, uh, set up all my systems and set up all my displays as I wish. So because I have the large area display, I can select four portals, so I can have four separate displays, which is a huge advantage over legacy aircraft and over, for example, the Mark 132 Hawk. Again, I can maximize the displays just to make sure I'm happy with my routing and uh, where I'm directed to, I'm steering towards the, uh, the target. And if you see, if you can look at the map here, you can see where I'm going, there's a red circle and that's a missile engagement zone, that's a simulated missile engagement zone for an SA-6 and that encroaches on my route just after the target so I'm going to have to be very careful after the target not to be uh, lit up, not to be illuminated by the SA-6 threat if I am then I'm going to have to take evasive action so I've checked the map, I've got my LDP set up, I've got a uh, single payway Payway 4, laser guided mop selected. I've selected my mode. I've got my self protection system switched on. So, this is the radar warning receiver that's going to give me an indication of any uh, radar threats out there, either airborne or, uh, or surface. And I've also got uh, my weapon system here. What I'm going to do is uh, also set up my so, uh, air to air radar just in case there is uh, an air to air threat and uh, if I were the instructor now I could select whether there's uh, whether the student was performing really well if he's a very if he or she is a very good student I could give them a little bit uh, a little bit of a harder time 
by actually placing some virtual entities, some air-to-air -air virtual entities that, that uh, he or she have to worry about. So now you can see 40 miles away on my nose, I've got an air threat. And I can interrogate that by touching the screen over it and I can see that he's uh, 327 knots and he's heading straight towards me. Uh, it's a flanker and that's shown on my radar warning receiver. So I need to be aware of that and what I'm going to do now is just commence the flying. So I'm now flying the simulator. 27,000 feet is my aim for altitude and about 0.8 Mach is the uh, attack speed. I'm going to select air to ground mode, designate the target, and you see the vertical line on the, on the HUD on the screen is my azimuth steering line. I need to steer over that to make sure that the bomb, when the bomb is released, it's released correct, correctly without any uh, left or right error. The flashing B at the bottom of the screen is uh, showing where the target is. I'm actually going to look at the laser designator picture. I'm going to zoom in on my target. And I want to just double check that there are no friendly forces. And it's definitely an enemy tank. Four enemy tanks. I can't see any friendly forces, so I know I'm going to be able to engage that safely. Maneuver the aircraft back to the azimuth steering line. I check my radar for any threats. I've got this threat here that's about 21 miles. I've got uh, a radar indication of him or a ra radar warning receiver indication of him there, but I'm not worried about him yet. If I look at my HUD, I can see that I'm about 15 seconds away from weapon release. So now I'm concentrating on the attack, but because I've got this large area display, I can see my radar picture, my radar warning receiver picture, I can navigate and I can also guide the laser beam. So there's a bomb away, I've dropped a weapon. I'm going to wait and see whether I'm successful with my attack. Watching the tank target, now I can see the impact. So battle damage assessment, I know that I've hit the target. Now I want to concentrate on navigation and the threats I'm faced with. So the target's behind me, I've successfully prosecuted my attack. Now I'm thinking I'm worried about this surface to air missile engagement zone over here. So I'm going to accelerate. I'm flying through these hoops because they give me an indication of where the navigation requires me to be for the route. My radar warning receiver is clear now, which is good. This uh, airborne, airborne threat is uh, a bit further away. I can zoom in by uh, using a swipe or I can use uh, my cursor or HOTAS controls. So I can use HOTAS or I can use the glass to control the systems. There we are, I can see my SA-6 now, so I'm starting to get worried. I'm approaching the missile engagement zone. He's obviously looking at me at the moment. He's illuminating me, but he's not fired a missile. He's not got fire control. Looking out for other threats. And as I approach the hoop, I can hear in my ear the warning. I can see the SA-6 in the HUD. So I'm going to close the throttle and I'm going to dive for the surface. So now, I want to put the threat on the beam, I want to put that missile on the beam, I want to fly away from him as fast as I can, but I've closed my throttle to avoid any infrared threat from a man pad or a surface to air missile. Descending into the valley, and the idea of this is that it's terrain masking, so any radar threat won't be able to see me because I'll be so close to the mountains and in the valley. And now I'm just going to aggressively fly through the valley, accelerating as I go down to avoid either any air threat from following me and any surface to air missile threat from uh, being able to engage me. And this is every pilot's dream, obviously, flying low level, especially somewhere as spectacular as the Himalayas. And you can see with the Advanced Hawk, we have a slatted wing, we have an advanced combat flap and we also have the 951 engine which delivers about 13% more thrust. So at this sort of high pressure altitude I'm actually able to manoeuvre quite well at low level and still maintain a reasonable level of energy to allow me to continue to manoeuvre for some time.
up at altitude I've also got uh, quite uh, good protection against uh, surge with the, uh, the 951 engine has a full authority digital engine control system which allows surge protection for the pilot so if the pilot slams the throttle from close to open uh, he's got basically carefree handling and the, the aircraft or the engine systems will actually protect him from surge. So I've got some uh, RWR indications, so I'm staying at low level, I'm going to stay with my manoeuvring at low level. I'm trying to avoid those threats. So if I want to manipulate the map, I can look at the map, I can find where I'm going towards lane. So I'm actually heading back towards base now, I'm going to fly at low level all the way back to lay. And what I'll do, just to save a little bit of time, is I'm going to freeze the simulator and just reset us back on approach to the runway at lay after a successful mission. So I've never landed for real at Leh, but uh, all the Indian pilots uh, I've met have told me it's a very, very challenging approach and that we can only take off and land in one direction and there's no overshoot options. You can't do rollers, obviously a very high pressure altitude, generally very warm in the summer and there are lots and lots of mountains that you need to avoid. One of the advantages with the Advanced Hawk is that we can land in a short distance because of the slower approach speeds, because of the slap on the leading edge of the wing and also we can stop quicker because of the advanced brakes. We've also got increased engine thrust which allows us to take off at a lower speed and climb at uh, a higher angle uh, combined with the slap while the gear's down or while we're at low speed. So what I'll do now is I've finished my mission, I'm going to uh, just demonstrate a more benign aspect of the flight. I'm going to fly an, fly an approach to lay. So this is a picture that you would expect to see for uh, the training mode, so basic training mode of the advanced port. If the pilot has finished his mission uh, and he's just coming home, he's got an artificial horizon, he's got a horizontal situation indicator, he's got his navigation display, and then he's got his menu system here. Perhaps he's interested in other aircraft in the area. One of the, one of the great features of the Advanced Hawk is that it has traffic collision avoidance, it has a ground proximity warning system, and it also has an autopilot. All these things make it safer for the pilot to operate. So I'm going to unfreeze the sim and start the approach. Descend, probably just inside three miles from the approach to Lake. Uh, it's a very, very high altitude airfield, and so we're probably a little bit faster ground speed than we would normally fly, and a very challenging approach. If you get low or slow, then you run out of energy, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. So first we position on the centre line, and then we make sure the glide path is correct. And then just a bit further on the way, we want to have a nice, uh, gentle flare. Normally we'd have to wait for a minimum braking speed, but because we have the advanced braking system, we can brake quite early on the landing run. And advanced Hawk has another advantage over the, the, the legacy or the older uh, Hawk aircraft like the 132. We have nose wheel steering which allows us to steer on the ground. pretty much it. That's the, that's the full, full uh, gamut of the mission and, uh, and the landing back at Lake. So I hope you've, uh, hope you've enjoyed looking at uh, Advanced Hawk and all its advanced features and how hopefully it will make uh, flying for the Indian Air Force and the Indian Navy safer and more effective in the future. Thank you.